There's a lot of uh, pipes involved in this job. And these things keep us safe. Oh my God. It's one of the best office views I've ever seen. Today, the turbines are getting a checkup, and that gives me a chance to go right to the top. Put this on? Yeah. That's right. your and because that's over 90 metres up, safety is vital. Pretty heavy. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, heights involved in this job. And these things keep us safe. But a harness isn't the only thing we need. It's essential Zach manually locks down the turbine before we get anywhere near the blades. Now, yeah, at the moment, it's in remote, so we can remotely operate the turbine if we have to. So we're going to go local today and put my personal lock on. So we're all safe and no one else can start the turbine. We'll have the key with us, yep. so no one can remotely start the turbine while we're up top. Time to go up? Time to go up, man. Let's do it. The first stop is the turbine's engine room. When the turbine is running, this section yaws or swivels the blades into the optimal position to catch the wind. When the tower follows the wind and yaws around into position of the wind direction, yep. this, this whole section here yaws around. So this, uh, this whole unit, the whole bit at the top, positions itself to face always directly at the wind? Yeah, within, within a certain small degree of angle, yep. but it's, it's, it yeah, literally follows the wind constantly. So it can produce the maximum amount of power that, to plug back into the grid. Yeah, that's right. Wind power works by transforming the wind's energy into the movement of the blades. To feed the grid, this movement of the blades then needs to be converted into electricity by a generator. This process happens in and around the nacelle, the pod that sits just behind the blades. So the blades are out the front, yep. connected to the spinner, like on the hub. Yep. And then we have the generator behind these silver plates. So the hub is where the action is, where the generator actually sits. Yeah, the generator is connected to the hub. Yep. It's in between the nacelle and the hub. Yep. So the hub initially with the blades catches the wind, yep. turns the generator, and then that's what creates the power. None of this is possible, however, if the turbine can't read and react correctly to the wind. So it uses a series of sensors that monitor wind speed and direction. And to inspect them, we have to go outside. Wow, oh, and that's the blade. Yep, and they're the blades. Oh, they're, they're massive. They're 55 metres long oh, wow. and about 12 tonne per blade. Oh, that's incredible. Oh my god. <laughs> That's an amazing view. From here you can really see the blades, they're, they're works of art. You can, they're super smooth, like a boat hull. You can see that they're made to withstand all of the stuff that South Australia throws at it. All the hail and the wind and the frost and the baking summer heat. An amazing piece of engineering. Hornsdale is part of a renewable energy success story. Wind is currently generating enough power to meet over 8% of the nation's demand and growing. 99 turbines, eh? Yep, 99 across the site. Generating all day? Yeah, all day and all night. Oh, whenever the wind blows, eh? <laughs> That's correct. Which is a fair bit around here, right? That's right. I have to say, it's one of the best office views I've ever seen. That's an amazing job. How did you get involved with this? I was in the oil and gas industry, and then renewables started to come about in South Australia, and I thought it was a great opportunity to um, get on board. Made the switch to renewables? Made the switch. <laughs> like Australia? Yep, that's right. <laughs> like Australia. <laughs> 